Very wonderful that people can meet here on Zoom from so many different countries. You know, and I think it's wonderful that there's a place we can sit and do this kind of meditation and do this kind of inner work, you know, to help build systems inside, you know, that help us really connect with a higher force of energy in the universe. But to me, the most important thing is the individuality of it. You know, we're not a society of yogis or a society of yoga practitioners. I mean, each person is here because they need to individually build a connection with themselves <clears throat> and higher energy in the universe. And to me, that's an essential ingredient of what we do, that people can not only get together, congregate and be a group, but each person in the group can get their own unique spiritual development, you know, that can help them grow and help them to really build a system that's able to open the doors that lead to spiritual enlightenment. <clears throat> there can be no more important reason for this because ultimately, you know, we all leave this group and we have to, we all live in our own worlds. We all live in our own realities. And we have to deal with that reality every single day. Purpose of the meditation is not to get a congregation of students for students. I'm really not interested. Purpose of the meditation is for each and every person that comes here to build that kind of inner life so that when the class is over, they can take the Shakti, the energy, the vitality, the quietness, you know, the simplicity of the class into their ordinary life and use it on a day-to-day -day level. <clears throat> you see, I've always been a firm believer in the practicality of spiritual practice. I'm not a real believer in, you know, well, I belong to a group and I eat vegetarian food and I this and that, I burn incense and I'm a spiritual. None of that really works for me. What works for me is what I just explained. We all sit and take in this amazing energy of the meditation class. And we use it in a practical way in our daily lives. So we not only learn how to open and receive this energy, but we learn how to use it with people we meet, with our families, our friends, our jobs, or, and whatever the reality is we have to live with every day. <clears throat> that we can live with that reality with a higher state of consciousness. I mean, without that, you never work out your karma. You never really get free of the earth because we're here to learn how to do that. We're here to learn how to live here, to ultimately become happy people living here, people full of compassion, love, kindness, and to be able to share that with the people in our lives. And to live without expectations, not to live here thinking that everybody is going to live the way we live. It's not possible. Most people don't have a heck of a lot of consciousness. But our work is about developing that consciousness and building the ability to truly, you know, uh, allow ourselves to recognize, you know, what we have to do in order to you know, live on the planet Earth, to learn how to grow, to learn how to live here open and full of love. And all of that requires a very deep inner strength. And that's one of the most primary aspects of what I teach, developing chi, developing the hara, building chi, building the hara. But building chi and building the hara can turn one into a dictator. You can build a lot of power inside yourself. So we need open hearts, we need love, we need compassion, we need kindness. We need to have a combination of the strength and an open heart so that we can interact with life, with humanity on the highest possible levels that a person can interact with humanity. So these things all fit together and they're so, much, they're so essential to this meditation that I teach. <clears throat> because the meditation has to have practical aspects to it. You know, it has to be able, you have to be able to use the results of this inner work in your daily life. Otherwise, it's a bunch of nonsense, you know? 
bunch of people sitting here, breathing heavy and staring, and it doesn't mean anything because the extension of ourselves enables us to work out karma, not to worship anybody, not, you know, not to be caught up in dogma or all kinds of stuff like that, but just to be able to be free enough to live in a world where we can recognize that every single person is a child of God. Every single person, the good, the bad, the crazy, the indifferent, they're all a child of God. And beyond that surface manifestation of energy, there's a seed of God in every single human being. Our work is to be able to, you know, speak to that seed, to be able to open deep enough in ourselves where we're not intimidated by other people's nonsense. And we can really recognize and have patience with people and have patience with life and, you know, have patience with everything that goes on in this world. And to recognize that there's a simple reality, you know, that we have, there's time and time is basically infinite. You know, and if people don't work out their calmer in this lifetime, you know, I mean, I'm a firm believer that there's not just one lifetime, there's the next and the next. And people, till people finally learn why they're born on the earth and what they're here to do, which is to transform all of the suffering, all of this tension and all of this nonsense that goes on in the world into an open heart and to love, into being a happy person. <clears throat> so it's really important to recognize this and to see how through our activity in the world, you know, you know, you know, which really tells us how much we're growing inside. And our activity in the world enables us to use the meditation in a practical way. <clears throat> and I think if people just recognize this and really open to this and and develop that kind of consciousness, not only does life get easier but we wait, don't waste a lot of energy on nonsense. You know, when people in our family get tense, we can love them anyway. You know, how many times in our life have we been tense with people in our families? We can forgive them what they do. You know, and I think this is all very important <clears throat> because it puts in a foundation for a spiritual life. And we're here to learn how to have a spiritual life. And without that foundation, a spiritual life is impossible. You know, we're adrift in the world of Maya. We're adrift in the world of spiritual energy. There's no rootedness inside us that can enable us to absorb both of them. <clears throat> so please, everybody, you know, try and work really deeply inside and just make that commitment. That it's not just sitting and meditating and getting a little calmer and quieter, but it's learning to use everything that takes place in this meditation, every bit of growth that takes place inside you, you know, learning to use it in a practical way in your life. Not to be an innocent person where, you know, you let people take advantage of you, because that's not a practical use of this energy. But developing the ability to, in a kind and even wonderful way of just being able to say, no, you can't do that to me. You know, not getting even crazy and upset if you can't do that, that's it. I, you, if you want to interact with me, I really need a much higher level from you. The ability to say no is, very, is just as positive as the ability to say yes, if we do it in a conscious way. So please try and work deeply inside. And what we're trying to gain is a healthy balance. You know, not to be on one side or the other side of polarity, but somewhere in between is that healthy balance. You know, where we can live our lives consciously, we can open and love people, we can love ourselves, we can open that door, that pathway to spiritual enlightenment and learn how to be happy people on the earth, which is really the basis of everything, of all, of all spiritual growth, just learning how to be a happy person on the earth. 
So we'll have a meditation class. And if anyone has a question after the class, I'll be happy to try and answer. I would like to ask. Um, I have a question. Um, I think I'm hung up on trying to like do it right and I'm afraid to be judged and I think I'm playing out a trauma sort of it's a pattern of behavior I don't know so I'm wondering like should I just sort of have you learned the exercise the double breathing exercise yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and, then. And the centering in the belly. And what it's like, am I hitting it? Am I hitting the belly? And there's so now, much. Can I t- tell you something? Just relax. Don't worry about it. You know, you, you know, you try it, you do it over and over again, and eventually you'll master it. But if you start worrying about it and start getting into your head about it, you'll destroy any possibility of learning it. Just relax inside. Mm. Just feel gratitude in your heart. Let your heart open. That'll relax you very deeply. Mm. And forget about, do I know it? Do I not know it? I, you know, I mean, if you want, I can take you through another Zoom session and teach it to you, you know. But if you get into your brain about it and start thinking about it and worrying about it, you'll destroy any possibility of learning it. Mm. If you relax, it'll just come. Just relax. Keep your mind focused below the navel. Open your heart by feeling gratitude and just relax as deeply as you possibly can. Mm. And then it'll just come. The exercise will just come to you. Mm. And then you won't have to even think about it because you'll do it organically. I mean, there's sometimes in these classes, I take one breath deep inside and, you know, and that's it. And then it's just the spiritual energy coming, working on me. You know, so it evolves this exercise. But if you think and try to figure it out and worry about it, and you know, you'll just confuse yourself and make it that much more difficult for you to to do. Yeah. It's- Leave yourself alone for God. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. (laughs) I need it, just leave yourself alone. What are you beating yourself up for? What do you, you don't have to be perfect, okay? (sighs) That's what I think, you know. So don't think about it, just don't be perfect and do it and learn it and grow with it and and let it really just come to you. Mm. Open, embrace it, let it come to you instead of I got to know it. I got to, you know, Mm -hmm. am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? You'll make yourself crazy. Yeah, I'm doing that in my life also. You know, frankly, look, in my life, I've written a lot of books. And in many ways, it's a similar kind of exercise. And at first, it was always making it right. And it never worked. And then when I just let it happen, these books all came. I've written a dozen books. They all just came. It came. It's the same thing in art and music and dance. If you just relax and learn the craft, it just comes. You are open to allow the higher energies to flow through you. Mm. But I remember when I was young, oh my God, do I know the craft? Do I work? Do I write? It became so congested and difficult that I gave it up, you know? And then as I grew in myself, I just let these things happen. I let life happen. I was in business for 25, 30 years. I just let it happen. I never try to figure out the business I was in. I just let it happen. And boy, did it work. It just worked. I mean, I made mistakes, but so what? We all make mistakes. And that's the kind of a confidence you build in yourself. 
that you don't have to make it happen. You just know the craft, open, relax inside, and let it happen. Let it just work for you. Yeah. Sure, I have a question. Yes. Um, earlier on, you spoke about having uh, your growth uh, be practical. And I was curious, what do you mean by your growth? Well, growth is in many dimensions. You know, there's spiritual growth, there's growth in your life. There's the ability to combine both. There's the development of a system inside that allows you to take in more and more spiritual energy. There's also the development of a system in your life to allow you to use that energy practically in many ways in the world. You know, that there's, there's many levels of growth. It's very, you know, it's all very parallel, the growth that takes place in a human being. And the, the key to it is always the development of a chakra system that is strong enough to allow you to do this. You know, so I, I find that, you know, look, throughout my life, one of the ways I've always been able to grow was to take situations upon myself that were bigger than I am. And then I would have to find out where I could get the energy to do it. And the energy always came inside me. I did this early on. I mean, I always talk about, you know, and Rudy told me, buy that building. You know, I had $600 and I said, okay, a month later I did it. When I had to go where the energy was that guided me in how to do that. I had no idea when it came to any kind of economics. I was such an idiot when I was a kid. I had no idea about money. It guided me. I went deep in myself. I asked me and it guided me, you know? And I found out a month later, I had the money to do it without robbing a bank. <laughs> so what I'm saying is I've always done that in my life. I've taken th things on me that were so much bigger than me. And then I had to find out how to go, where to get the energy to do them. I mean, I always tell that story where, you know, and a lot of the times it was economic things. Like when, after Rudy took his samadhi, he died. His mother called me up about a year later and I was living in Denton, Texas. And she said, how would you like to buy a couple of truckloads of art from me? And I said to her, Ray, do you know where I live? I'm living in the middle of Baptist America here. You know, this is you know, redneck country here. She said, all right, think about it. You know, I thought about it for about 10 minutes. I called her back and I said, I'll do it. And I, you know, put myself in debt for like about $175,000. At that time, today, it's probably about one and a half million dollars, the same money ratio. But I'll never forget the funny part of the story was I went to New York to do this with her. And she was not an easy person, Rudy's mother. She really wasn't. But she and I had a very great friendship and I loved her very much. She was my teacher's mother. And I, the first day I went to her store, she said to me, Everything that I was going to buy from her was so bloody expensive that it, the whole thing became ridiculous. So I spent like five, six hours there. I finally left and I said, Stuart, just forget about this. This is not going to work out. So that night I was teaching a meditation class and Rudy came to me in the meditation class and he said, bring my mother a bottle of scotch. He really told me this. <laughs> so I, the next day I got up. I went to the liquor store. I, I knew she liked Shiva's Regal. I went and bought a bottle, fifth of Shiva's Regal. I went to the store. I gave it to her. And she opened like a light bulb. The whole energy changed. It was unbelievable. All the prices became a third of what they were. The whole thing became manageable. I wound up buying two truckloads of, but you know, and when I think back, I, a bottle of scotch made it possible for me to be in the Asian art business. The Asian art business made it possible for me to move back to New York and to start teaching people all over the world. And at the same time, I put myself in debt for $175,000, which I paid back. 
I figured out, I sold, I worked, I worked like an animal, I sold, and I got myself out of debt. And I've been doing this like all my life in one way or another, always taking on situations that are bigger than me and trying to go deep enough. Where do I get the energy to do them? And I was always inside myself. And, never, and, you know, and it taught me not to be afraid, not to be afraid of money, of life, of people, to grow, to grow, to find that power in myself, that connection with God and spirit that allows these things to take place. Well, I'm not saying you all should do that. This is my karma, you know, but at each and every one of us in our own way, we have things like that we can do that enable us to, where do I get the energy to do this? I got to go deep inside. I mean, you want to have a child, you want to have a family, you got to get the energy to be able to have a family and really love the family and support the family unconditionally. It takes a lot of energy to do that. Where are you going to get the energy? You have to go deep inside yourself to get the energy. When I was younger, I wanted to write. And, you know, then I gave it up for 10 years. And when I came back to it, I no longer needed to write. I just let it happen. And I wrote a dozen books in the midst of running a business, running ashrams. I mean, people say, well, how did you do that? I, I don't know. It just came. It just came. Novels and spiritual books and all kinds of books I wrote. Books on human trafficking and books on you know, spiritual practice and books on novels about the 60s. I wrote, I mean, it all came through. I don't know where it came from. But I had developed the capacity to allow it to flow. And then these things come, incredible creative things come. To you. And I developed that capacity by always taking something a little bigger on myself. Even these Zoom classes, you know, at this point in my life, I should be retired sitting in Palm Beach somewhere and sipping on Coca Locos, you know? And I'm teaching, like today, there'll be 60 people coming to meditation. This is bigger than me. I have to grow in order to do this. That's what I mean by growing. And you get, where do you get the power to do it? Either from the ego, which then destroys everybody you interact with, or you get it from God, you get it from spirit. It flows through you and it gives you the strength to do so many creative things in life. By just letting go, you know, but trusting. Now I'm saying this is my karma. I'm not saying everyone here needs to live this way, but each and every one of us has things like that in our life. But we need to go where the energy is to allow us to accomplish these things without them becoming just ego accomplishment, you know, like Donald Trump and these, you know, billionaires, these people that destroy lives in order to, you know, attain what they want to attain in life. And by growth, this is what I mean. We all have situations in our lives that demand on us. Go where the energy is. Get really grounded inside, open your heart, let that energy flow through you. That enables you to embrace many different dimensions of your own life. When you cook a meal, cook it with love, you know? Do it with gratitude. You can feed your family, you can feed friends, you can, you know? You have a question. Yeah, um, in between times when we're not with you, um, how to facilitate the meditation? Well, that's what I'm talking about. I spent the whole prior to the class talking about that. That, that really is the key to whether you're growing or not. It's in between. between. In class, you get the energy. You get 
the development of the chakras. And you work in class to build a system so that when you leave the class, you take it with you. And you use it consciously in whatever particular way you live your life. So that, and then you say, you make a mistake, you blow it all, you know, all right, I got to go back to class and work deeper on myself. I got to sit down and meditate and now go deeper on myself, get stronger inside myself. But I, well, this evening I went off like a rocket, <laughs> but Good. I'm looking at you. Um, what I mean is how do I, how do I do that? Well, look, when you eat, don't do the double breathing exercise, you'll choke. <laughs> when you drive a car, don't do the double breathing exercise, you'll crash. When you cross the street, you have everything you do, you do consciously in the moment. But in order to do everything consciously in the moment, you gotta have a system that enables you to do it. So the classes are about building the system. Life is about using what you learn and grow and so with that system. And if you make mistakes, so what? You made a mistake, okay. If you hurt somebody, you apologize, you know? Then you go back and say, I really gotta work on myself. I gotta go deeper inside and get stronger and more conscious. And you have classes, you know, these classes go on all the time, every week. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I never dreamed that I could do classes like this all over the world with people. <clears throat> you, for God's sake, you're sitting in Denmark, you know? And people are in Israel and Poland. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. But these classes go on. <coughs> Take advantage of them. And don't worry about if you make a mistake, if you do something, you know, okay, I got to grow. I'm not perfect yet. And then you have a place to go and do it. So you I could not... just look at uh, an, in, an inanimate object. No, on your own, you should get a... Please try and sit up and do the meditation while I talk. Heather, try and sit up. Uh, on your own, you get a picture of a teacher. It could be myself, it could be my teacher, his teacher, it could be you know, the Buddha, it could be Christ, it doesn't matter. Somebody that's in a state of meditation, set up a little altar for yourself and then for 20 minutes to a half hour every day, beside this meditation class, sit down and do this double breathing exercise. And you just work, you keep your eyes open and focus on the eyes in the picture. And that'll give you discipline during the day. You understand, it'll teach you how to, and try to do it at the same time every day, in the morning, in the evening, whenever it is good for you. And then come to these classes, because there's really a lot of energy here. There's no shortage of energy in these classes. You know, look, even a car, sometimes smarter than people. When it runs out of gas, it stops, you know? <laughs> it needs to be filled up. People run on empty, you know? So here's a place, it's like a filling station. You come and get energy that can help you to do what you're asking about. I mean, even a refrigerator needs electricity or it doesn't run. Everything runs on energy. People run on, you know, they, they exhaust all their energy and they run on tension. And that really just really hurts people. Does anyone else have a question? Yeah, I, I have one. Yes. Um, I'll try to and I'll try to make this concise and, uh, and short. Um, my English is not that well. Um, while I'm doing the meditation this time, it, um, it's I'm I'm sort of experiencing like these almost blackouts. It's just um, uh, my body. I mean, I mean, I do the double breathing, and then it just and it just yeah, the the vision gets blurred. It's, it goes almost dark, and my body sort of starts wants to tremble, and I, it's almost like a feeling of losing total control of myself in, well, in, in short look, moments. Look, it is a way of losing control of yourself. Keep your attention below the navel, and let go. You what you're losing control of is years of you controlling yourself. You understand you disciplining yourself in a way where it's all mind and it's the what's right and what not right. And 
what your body is telling you is you got to release all that stuff. The trembling is about releasing all that stuff. Even the blackout, or the, I don't know if it's a blackout, but that you talked about, the, it's a way of releasing tension. It's a releasing that thing that has kept you so tied up in yourself most of your life that uh, you know, it keeps you from ever really tapping deeply into spiritual energy. Keep your attention below the navel, feel gratitude in your heart. All of that'll go away. It'll all go away. If you keep trying to control yourself, I mean, my God, you know, it, life gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And as you get older, you know, you shrivel up inside and outside. And this is all about letting go, letting yourself be guided by spirit instead of what you know in your mind and your, you think and, and that control that so many people have over their life, which it mostly it comes out of fear of letting go. And the trembling is that fear of letting go. It's not easy, you understand? I mean, look, the only person I say this all the time who keeps us from being spiritually enlightened is ourselves. It's the only person. We have to learn to let go, to master ourselves. Not in a controlling way, but in an open way through very deep surrender and deep inner growth so that spirit can come through and then it can guide our lives. Otherwise, we, people get so, you, know, you look at people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, they get so tight. They get so, you know, shriveled up emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in every way, physically. It's, it's years of controlling themselves, being tight inside, instead of just opening and allowing God to guide their life, spirit to guide their life. And just releasing that energy, it creates trembling, it creates everything you described. But on the other side of this is a whole different way of living. A person becomes really juicy. <laughs> Their heart can open, it can stay open, there's love inside them. You know? oh, good, good to hear because I was a little bit, you know, like, uh, what what's yeah so a little bit afraid i guess you know, if this is this supposed to happen or not sort of well it could happen to me don't don't worry about it <clears throat> it really happens not a problem you know it, it, you get to the other side of it and it stops happening <clears throat> thanks you're welcome <clears throat> Does anyone else have a question? Okay, well, God bless you all. Thank you. And in all humility, as I say, after every class, I'm just so grateful I can come here and do this. I see people sitting here from many different countries all over the world. And I'm very grateful to all of you to come to be part of this. I mean, I learn also in this. You know, the greatest thing about being a teacher is that you probably learn as much as the people you teach when you do this kind of meditation and inner work. So I'm very grateful and thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody uh, on Tuesday. God bless you all. And try to take this into your life. Don't just leave it here. Well, it's over with. Next. <laughs> take the energy, consciousness into your daily living. And thank you. Bless you all. And I will thank you. see everybody on Tuesday. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.